Hey guys, how are you going? My name is Dom and today I want to show you how to make a progress bar using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. So, this would be the final product. We have a progress bar in the browser, but also it has a JavaScript object attached to it, which allows you to actually change the value of this progress bar within your application. So, inside the console, I can actually type out pb1 and then call the set value method on pb1. Now pb1 is actually a reference to this particular progress bar. For example, let's say pb1.set value and pass in 85 into there. If I press enter, we see we get the change in the browser. So this set value method is actually sort of like a miniature API for you to then you know call upon within your app in order to make live changes to the actual user within the browser. So let's see how this thing actually works. Let's go inside an empty HTML document. Inside the code we have a similar story, just a single H2 tag. So let's get started. We're going to first just design the progress bar in HTML and CSS. So we're going to need three elements for this, okay? We're going to first need a div with a class of progress bar and this will be the main wrapper for the actual progress bar itself okay inside here we need two more elements a element for not only the actual value itself but also one for the fill so the green fill and also the value so let's make a new div and have a class of progress bar value okay Inside here, let's for example just say 65% for the time being, okay? The second element will be the actual progress bar green fill. We'll, we'll give it a class of progress bar fill. Okay, leave that empty. So now we have these three elements defined in HTML. Inside the CSS, we can begin to style these elements. Let's first target the progress bar itself. We'll say dot progress bar that class right there. Give it a width of something like 300 pixels, a height of something like 40 pixels and also a nice black border. Okay, now we're going to actually overlay, we're going to overlay the, the value as another div on top of the progress bar, which means we actually have to set the position of this progress bar as being relative. And we'll see why very soon. Let's just start by, or let's just continue by um, making the styles for the actual progress bar green fill. So we'll target the progress bar fill class, right? And give it a height of 100%. Okay? Give it a background color of this color code right here 59A, or sorry, 59EA63 and give it a transition property width and 0.25 seconds. This means that whenever I change the width of this progress bar fill, it's going to animate and the animation will take half a second. Okay, so now if I was to save this and then refresh the browser, we get this right now. Okay, so now we can see that this value is pushing the fill down. So let's get this value on top of the entire progress bar itself. So back inside the text editor, let's make a new uh, style group for the progress bar value. So progress bar value. Okay, let's give this a position of absolute, which means it's going to be floating above the, the, um, the nearest parent positioned element, which is that right there. So position, absolute. Okay, and now within here, I can type this out. Now within here, we can give it a width of 100%, okay, and a height of also 100%. So now it takes up the entire width and height of the actual parent, okay. So now saving this and give it a refresh, now we get that right there, okay. So we're getting there. Now to actually center this value and give it a bold um, font weight. We can go down here and we can display this value as actually a flex box, uh, sorry, a flex box, and give it an align items property of center 
that will vertically align the content within the value progress bar and give it a justify content of center, which will then horizontally align the content. All right, and give it a font weight of bold as well. So now saving this gives us the final result. Refresh, and we get that right there. Perfect. So now onto the actual JavaScript. Just keep in mind that we're going to be controlling the width of the green field to actually represent the progress bar state. So inside the actual um, dev tools here, if I get this progress bar field element and change the width to something like 25%, we see we get the animation happening and the actual uh, difference being displayed on the screen. So just keep that in mind. We're going to control this value using JavaScript. Okay, so now, give it a refresh. Back inside the code, let's start with the actual JavaScript. So, we're going to be using a progress bar class. Okay, so back to my demo example, we have this PB1, which is actually of type progress bar. It's an instance of the progress bar class. So, let's make that right now. Let's type out the class keyword followed by the name of our class, progress bar. Okay. Now for the constructor, this will take two uh, two arguments. The first one being the progress bar element. It'll be this one in this case right here. We'll type our element as the parameter name. And the second being the initial value. So initial value will be the first value of the actual progress bar. Let's give it a default value of zero. So now with this constructor where we're passing in not only the element to actually use as a progress bar, but also the initial value that will be, um, I guess, presented to the user. Right? And if none is provided, it's going to default to zero. So now inside the constructor, we can create two new instance um, variables to this class. So we'll say this dot value alum. Okay. This is going to reference that one right there. So we'll say this equals the elements dot query selector. Want to select the first element with the progress bar value class. Okay, so this element here is going to be the parent. We're going to say select the first element with the class of progress bar value, that one right there. Okay, we'll do the same thing for the fill element. So we'll say fill alum equals to the parent dot selector and put fill inside there. So now if I was to simply console.log the value alum and also the fill alum, we'll see what we get. That'll be this dot value and also this dot fill alum. Okay. Let's just make a new instance of this progress bar and see how we go. Down here we can say uh, new progress bar and then pass in a value for this element argument. Okay, so let's say document.querySelector. We're going to target the first element with a class of progress bar. So we're passing in this one right here to this progress bar constructor. If I save this and refresh the browser, what do we get? We'll refresh. In the console, we get an error. What's that? Not defined. Let's just see what's going on here progress bar, new progress bar. Okay, spot that wrong. Let's try it again. Refresh. We get the progress bar value and also the progress bar fill. Perfect. So now, back inside the constructor, let's just create, um, or let's just call a new method. We'll call the this.setValue method and set it to the initial value. Okay. We'll get rid of that right there. And now we'll actually define the set value method. So down here, I'm going to make a new set value method and give it one argument or one parameter. It's going to be new value. Okay. Now, this will be either, you know, between zero and a hundred. But what if the user actually puts in 2000 or negative 50? We want to actually make sure that the value is within zero and a hundred. So let's say, if the new value is less than zero, then force it to actually be zero. 
do the same thing for above 100. So if new value is greater than 100, then make it 100. Okay, and that forces the actual um, the range to be 0 and 100. So now down here we can simply then say this dot value a new instance variable is equal to the new value okay and then call the update method on this class so here we're setting a value making sure it's between 0 and 100 and then we're setting the actual value to an instance variable and then calling the update method which we'll define right now let's make a new method called update this will take no arguments and this will actually um, make the changes in the document object model or the actual browser. So let's make a new constant and call this one percentage. This will be equal to the percentage representation of the value. So we'll say this dot value and append the percent sign to that. So it looks like this, 50% or 60%, whatever, something like that, all right? So now, we're going to simply just change the text content of the value div and also change the width of the field div. So we'll say this dot fill alum dot style dot width is equal to percentage. Okay. And do the same thing for the text content of the value alum. So this dot value alum dot text content is equal to percentage. Okay. And that should be about it. We can now just go back inside here and give it a default value of something like, I don't know, 75. So now if I save this and refresh the browser, what do we get? We'll refresh, we get that right there, 75%. So now I can actually go inside the console. Actually, let's first get a reference to the progress bar um, instance. So we say new progress bar, Let's define that, let's, sorry, let's just assign that to a constant. So we'll say const pb1 is equal to a new progress bar. So now pb1 is actually a progress bar. So now if I save this and refresh the browser one last time, we can now do pb1.set value and change the value 10. Press enter, boom, we get 10 right there. Okay, you can obviously go inside here and you can make an array of progress bars. Um, you can you can call the set value method on uh, function callbacks from different libraries. You can, it's all flexible and you can obviously just, um, you know, make it work with application. All right, that's how you can use a, or make a progress bar using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Thank you for watching and I'll see you later.